You are welcome to Literature Hub 247, your free online literature class where the arts and science of literature are discussed every hour. This video is about an African novel titled Redemption Road, written by Emma Shaw. Earlier on this platform, we we'll discussed the plot summary as well as chapters 1 to 8 of Redemption Road. We've also done the character analysis of the characters in the novel. So if you need the link to any of those videos, just make your request through the comment section. Let's now go to the classroom. Redemption Road by Emma Shaw, Chapter 9. So we have chapters 9 and 10 here. But I want us to understand that the fear of Commander Cobra is the beginning of wisdom for Bendu Lewis. Since the time she saw Commander Cobra, she has been having a sort of fears, and she has been now having uh, nightmares, and the nightmare continues here. The following morning, Bendu is forced to join the fighters. Commander Cobra smokes marijuana while cleaning his gun. Some young fighters are attracted to his tent by the scent of the smoke. This is the continuation of the nightmare that uh, Bendu has been having about her experiences while in the uh, Duluma camp. Cobra Law is swept on and tests it on two men outside. Drugs are plenty and are distributed by the leaders of the various factions during the war. Cobra shots alert everybody. Even Bendu, whose hand is swollen, also comes out. Cobra only looks at the people and goes back to his tent. That is, after wasting some lives. That is, uh, their lives are not. They are not uh, meaningful to him. He just kill them and just go back inside. He shows his face again and commands that the dead bodies be removed before he comes out again. Four men come out to carry the dead men away while other activities also go on. Bendu now understand that the fighters who captured her are part of a larger group. She thinks the camp had been lived in by some people who abandoned it. The site is in the deep forest and doesn't know where the main road to the place is. Bendu goes back to the large mud room where she's being cared for by Anna and Mahamosu. Mahamosu is an old woman of 54 years who is loved by everyone because of her kindness. The woman doesn't like how Cobra killed the men. Bendu asks her why he killed them. Mamosu explains that that's how he behaves. He will strike anyone. She has that Cobra is one of the most disciplined leaders. The people are scared of him and respect him. Only Bendu and Mamosu are inside. Others have gone for exercise and drinks. Mamosu rubs a green paste on Bendu's arm and massages it for her. As Bendu hears in pain, the woman blames the boy that wounded Bendu. The pain soon relieves her. That is Solomon. It's Solomon that wounded her. Mamosu tells Bendu not to be scared by Cobra. Mamosu tells Bendu not to be scared by Cobra. She says, he is a good man, but turns into a different person when he smokes. He loses his memory during this period. She has that what makes people crazy. That is, somebody that is good can be burned and can become very wicked during war. In response to Bendu's questions, Mamosu says the name of that place is Tuluma and they were captured in Tututa, their village, and brought to the place. She narrates for her that she was on the farm when the people entered the village and captured and killed many people, including her husband. The only left old people and children. She doesn't know where her son is, but her daughters are in Duluma with her, while her sister died of cholera. Mamus also asks Bendu some questions. She responds that her parents are in the States and that they left in 1990, that is United States of America. The parents left 
uh, Liberia in 1990. She narrated for her how she and her grandma got trapped in the war. She says they have been in Sumofil for two weeks with her grandmother's cousin, Rebecca Johnson, and her children. They have gone to visit Rebecca Johnson and her children in the village when they got trapped in the uh, when the war erupted. She says they hear that the rebels were close by on the eve of their departure from the village. They then decided to leave very early to make it to Monrovia before the arrival of the rebels. Rebecca Johnson insists they stay with them since Granny May was not even well. The next day, Cousin Orlando escorted them to a taxi park, but the place was deserted. They later saw two passing pickups, and the occupants jumped down and burned Cousin Orlando into the back of the vehicle. They tied his hands and threw him into the back of one of the vehicles. Bendu and Granny May were ushered into the car. While in transit, in the vehicles that ran a high speed, Bendu overheard a conversation between a man and one of the drivers. She decoded their conversation that Diana Bridge had been destroyed. That's the name of a bridge. The people in the station wagon are of different sexes and children. She felt they were being taken to safety. No one talked to one another as the vehicles traveled a long distance. Nothing was seen except trees, bushes, and unused land. She tells Mamusu that she and Granny May were dropped at Chalutan while Cousin Orlando was taken away. The people of the town took care of them, but there was no medical care in the village for Granny May. By the end of their second week, Granny May was too weak and sick, and came the attack that scattered everybody. They are interrupted by the footsteps of one of the rebels, Joseph, and a man who has come to take Bendu away. The woman tells her to lie down before she attends to the men. That is a uh, mamosu. She tells uh, Bendu to lie down. Maybe she doesn't want. She doesn't want. I mean, want the uh, the men to see her. Mamusu tells them that Bendu didn't sleep overnight because of the wound she sustained from Samson. It's Cobra that sent them to bring Bendu. The other man grabs Mamusu and forces his way inside. Bendu stands on her feet, challenging the man for maltreating Mamusu. The man grips his gun tightly, about to launch at Bendu, but steps back when he sees that Bendu stands at ground. Mamuzu asks whether Cobra is in the oven, and the man say he is in his room. She then ushers Bendu towards the room. Bendu is led to the commander's tent, where Samson, who broke Bendu's finger, sits on guard outside. Cobra just finished his duji when Bendu is pushed into the tent. That would be like a marijuana, a drug. Cobra asks Bendu why she insulted, insulted them the previous night. He now tells Bendu that there's no room for disrespect in the group. He tells her that she was lucky that she was not killed. He says Bendu will stay with them to be safe. Bendu is now relieved as she thinks she will be killed. So Bendu is thinking that uh, she's going to be killed. But from the statement from Commander Cobra, she's now relieved. Cobra continues and says that women are important at the battlefront and that she will be useful to them. He then calls Samson and hands her over to him as his wife. Samson is happy while Bendu, who is surprised, is speechless. Samson threatens to kill Bendu if he gives her any problem with a knife placed on her throat. She places a, a knife on Bendu's throat and telling her that uh, she's going to kill her if she disturbs, she disturbs him. He leads her through the camp at knife point while the people watch. Despite this, Bendu screams, calling for help, but nobody dares say anything. When they enter Samson's hut, Bendu is pulled onto his mattress and starts ripping her. She's just praying silently for the difference. Bendu sees Samson's knife glittering into her eyes, but she doesn't have the mind to kill anybody now. As Samson continues to hit 
her heart on the bed. Bendu suddenly becomes hysterical. She starts eating something with her hand. She then gives him a strong blow in the eye and the eye oozes with blood. Samson continues violating her despite this and Bendu is no more worried. She wails and shouts as if her life is being taken gradually. That is chapter 9. Now chapter 10. The paper bears with Bendu but her eyes are still closed. She is confused about where she is until she hears the familiar voice of the Yana boy selling his soap and bleach. Her mind is now at rest that she is in Monrovia and not the room. I remember she is uh, having a nightmare. Later in the morning, Bendu goes to a nearby supermarket. She hears another familiar voice again calling her name. Miss Lewis, she freezes as the voice is much closer to her. She turns to the direction of the caller and she sees Cobra crossing the street towards her direction. Bendu doesn't know what to do. She tries to step back as Cobra comes closer. Cobra keeps on closing on her as he steps back. Bendu's heart is beating fast. Bendu's heart is beating fast. Cobra smiles, refilling his teeth. He calls Bendu the pseudonym. They call her during the war, lifted down TK Ho to ascertain she's the one. Cobra is trying to ascertain that uh, it's Bendu that is uh, in front of him. So she called her that uh, name. They, they gave her during the, when she was at uh, Duluma, left her down TK Ho. Before Bendu can respond, Cobra hugs her as if they are friends. And Bendu is surprised. He asks her about her welfare. And Bendu replies with a shaking voice that she is fine. Cobra invites her for a drink in the town. Bendu is about to turn down the request, but asks her to think and asks him where to find him. Cobra replies that he is at El Mesin on Cali Street. He writes his room and phone number on a slip of paper and gives it to her. Bendu quietly tells Cobra not to call her by the word name. Lifted and TKO again. Cobra is bound that it's good to forget and put all those things behind, but says he will never forget Samson's eye after she punched him that day. That is where the name TKO, technical knockout, comes out. That's the full meaning of TKO given to Bendu because of the knockout she gave to Samson at the Duluma camp. Cobra then asks whether Bendu is still a miss. Or Mrs. Bendu doesn't have any option but to answer him that she is Miss Lewis. Cobra says he's surprised that Bendu is still not married. He says they will have talked more but have some business to take care of. He then tells her that his name now is Moses Vernon. She should just ask for V. Bendu holds the slip of paper he gave her and watches him going until he's out of a site that is chapters 9 and 10 of Redemption Road. Please, if you are just joining this channel, just click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you'll be part of this class. And whenever we release any video, you are going to be notified. Like this video, you are free to share it on any social media platform, invite your friends to join us. Please, teachers in the house, do not hesitate to introduce your uh, student to this platform. So that they also benefit from it and it will even ease your own as uh, it, it will ease your interaction with the students in the class if you have any comment use the comment section thank you and god bless let's meet in the next class